Oh, God! There we go. Ah. Don't worry, it's OK. Let go of me. Let go. We're back on shift inside the ambulance. Whoa, got a job. If you need me to get in the back, you might have to stop. With more medical emergencies. I'm OK. Oh, that's a good one. And more cameras. What's that up there? That, Tyler, is a little camera. We're taking you back to the heart of the action. Just lie down for me. We're from the ambulance, OK? No, I'm sorry. Ah! There are some new faces. I'm happy to be your crewmate. I feel like we've bonded. <laughs> and some old friends. I'm better driving than you. Is it the fact that I'm faster and smoother than you? Your driving's terrible. How can I help? <laughs> Body-mounted cameras record every moment. Nice deep breaths. Come on, open up. Smash in. To show you what goes on behind closed doors. We'll get you right. Right. You'll be on the front line with the ambulance crews from West Midlands Ambulance Service. I don't need to be a doctor. I just need to know what I can do to help. As they deal with 3,000 emergency calls each day. We see so many people. You get told that nasty C word. There's so many people can fight it now. Step inside the ambulance. You take care, you, mate. You. All right, mate. Thank you. the West Midlands Ambulance Service in the early hours and days of a new year. What's your New Year's resolution? My New Year's resolution is to go out more. <laughs> <laughs> I like that one. Because, do you know what I did last year? I kept saying, oh, I want to go and do this. I want to go to the theatre and see this. I want to go to London and do this. And I never did any of it. Eat more eggs. Yeah. I like eggs. I've been eating plenty of eggs. But what were you thinking about 15 eggs a day? What do you reckon? You're going to die of cholesterol. Happy New Year! Szczęśliwego Nowego Roku. It's only two words, three words. I expected to see more people doing the walk of shame, if I'm honest. I saw a couple on the way into work. A girl doing the walk of shame back home. <laughs> no shoes on. No shoes. <laughs> January the 1st. Trainee paramedic Fiona Jones and her mentor, paramedic Simon Little, have just started their shift. Oh. Hey. And we're off. We are on case 1321. And we're going to an unconscious male. Oh, it's been updated. 80 years old, unconscious, able to be rolled onto side. Unable to be woken, dementia. Happy New Year. To oh, bless him. First job of the New Year. First job of the New Year. 80-year-old Hubert is at home with his wife Mildred and their daughter Vanette. Happy New Year to you. Hubert's family called for an ambulance when they weren't able to rouse him. Does he normally respond to you? Yeah. Chuck, what does he suffer with? He's got dementia. Yes. He's um, on anticoagulants and he's got high blood pressure and uh, he's got MS. He's also got um, bladder problems. Yeah, I see problems. the color. He's yeah. double incontinent. Bed bound uh, then. Of, yeah, he's off his feet. Is he diabetic? No. Just need to take a little drop of blood out of your finger, Hubert, OK? Hubert, can you squeeze my hand? So, well, he's awake, anyway. He's awake. He's got radials. 6.4. <laughs> Sorry, sir. Can there. I have to come and pop this on your shoulder? Just going to take your temperature, Hubert. <laughs> Low. Yeah. Has he been eating and drinking the last few days all right? Yeah. Yeah? 
So at all, at any point this morning, has he been conversing with anybody? Not with me. I'll Not try. with you. I've been trying since I've been here. Hubert? Hubert? Dad? Dad? Hubert? Dad? It was worrying because Hubert was unresponsive to us. He couldn't comply with any of our um, tests we needed to do. And because of his complex past medical history, it was really difficult to establish what was going on with him. And because he was bed bound, you immediately start to think, how are we going to get him to the hospital as quickly and as safely as possible? It's been over an hour since Hubert responded to anyone properly, and everyone's concerned. 6 is the last time she spoke to him. But it could have happened before that. Has he had a seizure? Has he not? Yeah. Because Hubert's not responding to neurological tests, the team decides he needs to go to A&E. We'll pop him up the hospital and they'll get him checked out properly there, OK? All his, all his like, vital signs are good. His heart rate's good, his blood pressure's good, his oxygen levels are good. Has he ever had a stroke or anything in the past? No. no. I and never had a seizure before? It's not... Not that we're aware of. OK. What's that? Feet. Feet, no. <laughs> Sorry, sir. Sorry to mess We're just going to pop this round your middle, OK, to help us get you on the chair. Just rolling towards me a bit, Hubert, OK? Sorry. It's coming along a bit more now, to be fair. Try and sit, sit up with us, Dad. Try to sit you up, all right? Uh, One, two, three. You'll have to hold that. That's good it. Well man. done. Very good. Well done. Nearly there. Well, I'll just pivot him now. Yeah. Okay. Ready? Yeah. That's it. Well done. So if you could try and massage his legs onto yes. there. Yeah. Hello, sir. Are you waking up for me now? Right, I've just got to get you onto this bed, okay? Steady. Side. Oh, yes. Sorry, Hubert. A little bit more over. Steady. Steady. Go. That'll keep you a bit warmer, OK? Hubert's wife, Mildred, is going with him in the back of the ambulance. That chair's for you. Okay. If you could sit down, get your seatbelt on. Oh, Lord, you it now. Just to your left. With fears that Hubert could have had a stroke, Fiona calls ahead to hospital. Morning. Um, I've got an alert for you. Um, I've got an 80-year-old male um, who's having some sort of neurological event. All his other obs um, are fine. Um, his pupils aren't reacting to the light, but they're equal. Okay. Yeah, and we're about five, five minutes away. Thank you very much. Bye. Are you okay? Yeah. How long have you been married for? This year. Have you? Yeah. Have you always lived in the Midlands? Yeah. Yeah. He got here when he was 18. Did he? Where from? Okay. Is it just the one daughter you've got, or...? Two daughters and one son. Oh, so in Sheffield. Yeah. And then they've come down for Christmas. Oh, Early yeah. family, yeah. Did anything like this ever happen before with him? No. Don't get yourself worried, OK? It's all right. Everything's everything with his heart and his oxygen, everything's okay at the moment, all right. Don't don't get too worried. He's coming he's coming a bit more to life since we've got there as well, hasn't he? Would you like a tissue? Like a tissue. Yeah. You've got some. Okay. Don't worry, okay. We'll look after him. We're going to the best place, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah. Alright, Hubert, we're here now, okay. Hubert will be taken into A and E, where his neurological symptoms can be assessed further. Few bumps. What 
what was going on with you, bit mate? Well, to be honest with you, I'm not entirely sure. No. He was having some sort of neurological problem, wasn't he? His consciousness was too low for any sort of neurological assessment. Well, it seems to be pointing in that direction. Yeah. But he did perk up a bit. I think that's an interesting thing. This one piece will make 52 layers. Watch on mobile devices or the big screen. All for free. No subscription required. Download Veely now. What did you do for New Year's then, Bert? I worked in the day. Yeah. And then I knew I wasn't on till tonight, so I thought I could go out. But then as soon as it got to half past midnight, I was like, I'm too tired for this, and went home. I like the whole sense of New Year being like January the 1st. New Year, fresh, like, fresh plate. I am going to play on the PlayStation more. That's what That's what I'll do this year. I haven't made any New Year's resolutions, really. I don't like New Year's. I mean, everybody always says, well, I'm going to drink less, I'm going to, I'm going to eat healthy food. Join the gym. <laughs> you know, the usual stuff. Yeah. It's a chilly January evening in Dudley. Honestly. Oh, let's hit the button. And regular crewmates Laura Hickman and Lewis Prosser are on shift. You go right by here, boy. I'm going right there. You go right by here? Yeah, I'm going right there. That's all right then. Yeah, better be. <laughs> Tell you now. You're not going to lie to you. I won't lie to you. Disrespect me, right? I don't ever think I've heard an aggressive Welsh person, though. You just can't do it. Oh, we're just too jovial and sort of... Listen now, right? Listen now, right? That's hot. You... Right? <laughs> I can't take you seriously. <laughs> For me now. Are you going to smack you in a minute? Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. We're going to a 37-year-old who's vomiting, nausea, dizzy and feels cold. A few minutes later, they arrive at the home of Lara, oh. a mum of three who called for help when she felt unwell. Waiting for them is her husband, Andy. Hello. All right. Hello. Hello. We for you, sweet. Hello there. What's been happening, my darling? Um, I was tidying up my daughter's bedroom. Yeah and tried to sort out and then a box fell on my head and then I fell backwards between the bed and the beauty and the tea trolley thing and then as I was trying to get up I was being sick and then gone and had to lie down on the bed and I've been a bit sicky and I feel really cold. Okay. Okie dokie. We'll, we'll do some checks on you. Okay. And we'll see where we go from there. All right. Okay. Just happy work and we mentioned I've got a long term health problem. What's that one? Total situs inversus. The heart's over the other side of the body. Never. The organs are the opposite way round, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, completely like a mirror image. Good gosh. That's a new one on me. You're quite an anomaly. The lungs are still in the same place, though. I should hope so. <laughs> With the right side. Yeah. So. Rare health condition or not, any dizziness or vomiting after head injury can be signs of more serious trauma. Before deciding if Lara needs to go to hospital, they need to work out how urgent the situation is. Do you want to pop in this one for me? How many times were you sick, darling? Um, I think I've been sick about five times, four or five times. So when people do assessments on you at the hospital and such, do you have all sorts of weird and wonderful anomalies and everybody panics and then it's like, no, no, it's quite normal for me. <laughs> yeah, what you say, probably. Mm. Right. I'll soon find out. Do you mind if I have a quick feel, Laura? Yeah. Is that all right? Do you want to pop your glasses off? 
So point to me where you originally hit your head. Uh, I think, it, yeah, I'm sorry, quick. I think it was like here. Just on the side yeah. there, is it? Painful to press. Take it. That makes me feel sick. Just makes you feel sick, yeah. does it? Okay. All right. Look at the end of my nose. It's big enough. Have another blink. That's lovely. Six. Pearl. Cool. Wicked. Okay. Mm. When you fell and banged your head, did you lose consciousness at all? I don't think I did. No. no. Okay. Do you can remember falling and then kind of thinking, <laughs> oh, I can't get up? Yeah. And calling for someone straight away? Yeah. Okay. I'm panicking because my three kids are running around. No. <laughs> Running out. Mom's down, quick! Right, the cupboards! As Lara is responding properly to light and has normal eye movement, it doesn't look like she's seriously hurt. But with any head injury, you can't take any chances. All right. If you have been sick after banging your head, I always recommend A&E, yeah. just for a check-up. Um, I don't know if you can get yourselves there. Medically, we won't do anything in, in the ambulance with you. We'll just be a taxi, really. No blue lights and sirens today, bro. With nothing else the team can do for Lara at home, they leave her to make her own way to hospital. Best of luck, Laura. Or oh, Lara, I should say. <laughs> Take care. All the best, both. ta -da. Lewis and Laura continue their shift and update control. Yeah, mate, this 37-year-old female had, uh, had a box land on her head earlier, um, about quarter past four. Fallen, banged her head off the bed, uh, and since then has vomited a few times. Um, all observations were perfectly normal. Patient was able and willing to make her own way in a taxi, uh, so I've sent the paperwork towards them and uh, towards the hospital, and she's um, got herself in a taxi, and she's probably there now. <coughs> that was the 75. Get ready for your cat one. I'll tell you some jokes, I've learned some new ones. Go on, then. Two goldfish. <laughs> I can't tell jokes because I laugh at them too much myself. Two goldfish are swimming around a tank. And yeah. the one goldfish said to the other goldfish, how do we drive this thing? <laughs> OK, please laugh. <laughs> That's a really bad joke. That is a terrible joke. <laughs> oh, no. That's awful. I don't... What's my other one? OK. Why did the banana go to the doctors? Oh, I don't know, Tony. Why did the banana <laughs> go to the doctors? Because he wasn't peeling very well. <laughs> West Midlands ambulance crew Fiona Jones and Simon Little are on their first shift of the new year. Day. It feels like another day, doesn't yeah. it? I'm really I'm glad it's another day. It makes it feels like that's a good start to the year. First of January on a Monday. Whee, what a problem. Yeah, first of January start. Fiona and Simon have received an emergency call from a pregnant woman who's having complications. Two, three. A pregnant female, uh, age 38, with abdominal pain. She's had uh, a blood clot in, uh, in a previous pregnancy. Yeah, that's received. Uh, we're mobile. Thirty-eight-year-old Veronica lives with her husband John and their four children. Hiya. Hi. Hello. Oh, we've got a house full, haven't you? Yeah, My name's Fiona. Is this is Simon coming through the door. Veronica called for an ambulance when she began bleeding heavily. So you're about eight weeks pregnant with this one and you've been losing blood since yesterday. Yeah. She had, is, uh, it, is it clots or is it just clots? Yeah. clots. Oh, OK. Oh, no, no, it's fine, it's fine. Because the last time I gave birth, no surgery already yeah. telling me about this. The last time you gave birth, the surgery said that this pregnancy will be high risk. Okay, no, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry about that. It's okay, don't worry. The, the, the little one. Yes, yeah. it's a premature. Okay, premature. 
Well, when she had Jaron, she had the... Uh, she, she had the surgery. Stomach, yeah. Stomach uh, and they had to stitch it all up. OK. As in, uh, when you go to someone in the early stages of pregnancy, if they say they've had blood loss, it's not immediately always worrying and you jump in your head to think they may be having a miscarriage. But as soon as Veronica informed us that she'd had a previous pregnancy with complications where she needed surgery and she'd suffered quite a lot of damage inside, immediately it makes you more worried. And have you been fitting well the last few days? You've been OK, eating OK? You've not fallen or...? Uh, no, just get that headache. Just a headache? Uh, I get medicine. That's OK. And have you got a headache or anything now? Yeah. On the back. OK. Any pain in...? Yeah. yeah? You've got pain yeah. there? OK. We'll need to go to the hospital and see what see what's going on. Yeah. Yeah. We can't. We can't. We can't say tell what's happening here. I know you're at one 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 for. No, I don't. But, <laughs> don't worry. Um, okay. Yeah. New cross Amy. Okay. No, because <laughs> no, no one. <laughs> It's always upsetting for us as a crew as well because it's difficult to know what to say to make them feel better. Because she was so early on in her pregnancy, um, it was important to get her to the hospital safely and provide support for her on the way um, so she could get assessed properly there and establish what's going on. The only way we're going to find out what's, what's going on is there, isn't it? They can give you a proper, a proper check, can't they? Although understandably distressed, Veronica agrees that going to hospital is the best option. Sit on this chair. <laughs> You've got your hands full in there, haven't you? Thought with four little ones. <laughs> They're very cute. I always miss my story. You miss them? Yeah. Oh, don't worry, it's all right. John's going to look after them, isn't he? And then you'll see them again later. You won't, hopefully, won't be too long at the hospital, OK? It's OK, you're allowed to be upset, aren't you? Because the surgery said to me is a very high risk. Yeah. <laughs> at least they know all about you, though, don't they? They know, they know about what happened last time with your surgery. and they, they know, yeah. so they can give you the best treatment then, can't they? Yeah. Yes. Within eight minutes, the ambulance arrives at hospital where Veronica can be seen by the specialist obstetrics team. Can you come in? We'll come in, yeah. This way. Yeah. That's I mean, eight weeks. Yeah. Eight weeks is, is the days. miscarriage time, isn't it? And, and she knew it was, she'd been told it'd be high risk, didn't she? Yeah. So it's probably she hasn't the miscarriage. She's gone to hospital for the doctors to check her over at least and see how they go from there. But I mean, hopefully she isn't. It's quite sad, really. It is, yeah. in Leeds and we got this dog I was in bed he used to sleep in the kitchen on our old house I heard this raucous and I thought oh dog's wrecking the place oh. go downstairs and this guy is in my kitchen pinned against the cooker with an 11 year old 11 month old Jack Russell hanging from his bits <laughs> right? there is more blood than I have ever, still to this day <laughs> even doing this job I haven't seen that amount of blood and he's going mate mate get him off get him off mate get him off <laughs> And I thought, oh, you've come through the window. <laughs> I thought, well, I'm not going to get him off, mate, because I've got to call the police. <laughs> Paramedic Gaz Clark and ambulance technician Lee Timbrell have been crewmates for five years. 
We're going to a 56 year old male who's fallen down the stairs and got a head injury. 999 when activated. So when are you going to get your hair extensions in? I think I'll need the gluey ones. I don't think my hair is long enough to have the metal clips. Yeah. I think I'll only go for, like, nine-inch extensions, you know. I don't, I don't want to look too ridiculous. <laughs> When they arrive, the patient's wife, Ellen, is waiting for them. Hello. Hi. Is it Chris? Yeah. Hi, Chris. What's happened tonight? <laughs> well, I can see the results of what's happened, but what happened? You've fallen down the stairs. How did you guess? <laughs> what, made, just... what, what caused you to fall? Well, I just... Went down the stairs and I just slipped. Well, how far down had you got? I was halfway down the stairs. Halfway. And I just. So did you go forwards or did you go backwards and go down? Forwards. So you literally face planted yeah. straight down head first? Yeah. Chris could be suffering from a concussion or something even more serious. Right. Have you got any pain around here no, where my fingers are? No. Nothing. Here? No. Got no pains at all. Excellent. Your arm does hurt, though, doesn't it? Have you had any? Ah! Which arm? Look, right. She just squidged it. <laughs> okay. Have you had any alcohol today? Say, yes, I have. You have. How much have you had? I've had about two and a half pints. Okay. All right. Let's have a look at this one because you have an absolutely it's a cracker. fantastic it's a cracker. cut that could be closed very easily. Just not by us. So you've had some alcohol today. Have you had any other substances that maybe you shouldn't have? No. <laughs> I've got to ask. Yeah. I've got no, to I've ask. I have got yeah, to ask. Because I suffer with some sort of seizures, which my neurologists don't know what they are. I'm on so many different medications. I've got all the medications. <laughs> okay, okay. Which I've got. All... If Chris has had seizures, a bang to the head could be life-threatening. I'm going to take a photo of that on your head as well. Mm -hmm. All right, nice and still. Oh. It looks like you've took the surface area from skin off on a couple of other areas. One mm -hmm. here, Look, well, big area here. Well, I did go down with the big fall. <sighs> Sorry. Makes you look a bit more human now. Just as Chris appears to be stable, he starts to shake uncontrollably. <sighs> right. Are the shakes normal for you? It's all right. No, you've gone cold as well, haven't you? Slow, relaxed breathing. Slow, slow breaths. Don't, 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 don't. I'm all right, all right. Control your breathing, Chris. Sorry. Oh, no, you're not bad. <clears throat> Just relax. Just relax. Just relax. Mm. That's it. Mm. It's like popping to accident and emergency for this. Yeah. But Chris doesn't appear to want to go anywhere. Come on, then, cos I've got your coat and everything. No, no way. Leave me alone. You need to go and have your head looked at. No, really. Yeah. Can you leave me alone? No, we can't. No, you're on a blood thinner, you've had a head injury. You need to be seen at the hospital. The injuries to Chris's head seem to make him slightly confused, but having had a drink, it was hard to tell. Sometimes he was talking to us and other times he's quite combative. It was important he was checked out further to make sure there's no bleed going on with inside his brain. Are they here? No. Yes, yes. We're here. We're here. We're here to take you now. We're going now. Oh. That's what we need you to do, is sit forward, stand up, and we're going. Oh my God. Damn. Oh. Chris hurt his shoulder in the fall and has been complaining that the pain is getting worse. Ah, ah! I'm trying to try me up. My shoulder. I'm really not in the mood for this. 
They never happen at the most opportune times. No, I'm, I'm afraid. I don't think you decided to face plant downstairs on yeah. purpose, did you? That's it. Damn. That's why they call these things accidents rather than deliberate events. Yeah. Let's put it on the air side of your collar so it feels comfier. Right, stick your bum all the way up the end of that thing. <coughs> Keep coming up. Keep coming towards me. That's it. That's oh. it. Get your legs up. Brilliant. Oh. Thank God for that. <coughs> right, come on up there, my love. Alan and Chris have been together for 14 years. Tell you what, you jinxed it today. You've got your Mr. Bump socks on it. Oh, right, that's it then. Yeah. He hasn't got his Mr. Irritating socks on for you. That's every day, but. Oh, is it? Right. That's just a different yeah. Do you know what you hit your head off? Did you hit it off that metal thing at the bottom? Bottom stairs, yeah. That metal thing. Yeah. When they arrive at A&E, Chris is still feeling the effects of his fall. The pain I'm going is that side of me. Mm -hmm. It's killing. But that's the same pain that you've had, only worse. Well, it's getting worse at the moment. Well, we'll get it looked at in case there's any additional damage to it. That's what I was thinking. So that Chinese just outside your place looked absolutely beautiful. It is. Yeah. Really good. And I'm just thinking supper. Very good. Mm. Yeah. But a nice chicken chow mein. Yeah. That'd be good. Yeah. But considering only had two and a half drinks, um, he seemed a bit worse for wear. Unless those two and a half drinks topped up what he'd had last night being New Year's Eve. Might have been seven sheets to the wind last night. Yes. I worked a full 12 hour night shift and I got into bed five minutes after you text to say that you'd gone into bed. Yep. Yeah. And that was a good night, mate. You must have uh, managed that one well. Yeah. Well, I went shopping before Christmas. I treated myself to shoes. Did you? Yes. How much I did you spend on shoes? Seven pairs of Uggs. What? Don't overlook me. I had me four pairs of high leg boots because I couldn't make up my mind what colour or what style. So I had both styles in black and brown. Then I had two pairs of those. You know, have you seen them bobbly trainers? And what trainers? Bobbly trainers. They got like a furry bobble on the front. They was in um, like a dusky pink and a black. Again, couldn't decide, so I had both. Dudley ambulance crew Joe Wilson and Hannah Potter are on their way to help a 36-year-old woman who's called 999 in distress. And she's self-harmed. She's cut her wrist with a razor blade. 999 mode activated. The ambulance quickly arrives at the patient Roxana's home. Hi. Hello, are you Roxana? Yeah. Hello, mate. You called for an ambulance? Yeah, you need the ambulance. Yes, you mate. Police officer. Oh, really? Can we come in? Yeah. Roxana, who's under the care of a specialist crisis team, has a history of self-harm. She's taking medication for anxiety and depression, among other conditions. Um, so what's gone on tonight, then, Roxana? I can see. Yeah. What have you done that with, mate? A rise of blind. Is it clean and...? Yeah, it was clean. It, it was clean. Like, sterile and new, was it, or...? Yeah, a new one, and I've cut my leg as well. OK, what's made you do that, mate? 
because I've got a motion and stable borderline personality disorder. Right, OK. Roxana um, appeared to be quite highly medicated and she'd self-harmed, but we can't concentrate too much on um, just the wounds. There's emotionally something um, not quite right and we need to address that. We need to be really sensitive. Well, we're going to have to clean those up and bandage you up, all right? Yeah. And how long ago did you do it, mate? It's been over about... 45 minutes an hour now. Oh, 45 minutes an hour. OK. Have you got anyone that you can talk to before, you know... I've found the crisis team. Are you here alone, Roxanne? I've got a cat, but she's in her own bedroom. She's got her own bedroom? Yeah, but <laughs> I lie on the sofa mm. and she crawls along with me. Does she keep you she awake? And to sleep on my chest. <laughs> She hates my partner. Sure. She chases him out the room, so I can't have a <laughs> life together. Just oh. leave me alone. <laughs> have you locked her away now, then, have you? Yes. Yeah, I'm in glad. I don't want to attack me. <laughs> right. This is possibly going to sting a little bit, mate. All right. Very gentle. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to hurt you, do I, mate? Injuries like Roxana's can sometimes be life-threatening. Jo uses sterile wipes to clean her cuts to avoid infection taking hold. Shall have a look at your leg? Proper scrape this, isn't Yeah. Can you lift your leg slightly for me? That just needs a plaster. Well, it's quite big. I haven't got plasters that big. Uh -huh. So... Nearly there, last little bit. Where's your ra where's the razor blade, mate? I threw it away. Away where? Out the window or in that bag there? Over there. It's over there, so you haven't like thrown it away properly. No. We'll put it in our sharp spin. Okay. Just to get rid of it. This time of year, sort of New Year and Christmas, you see a rise in um, self-harm, attempted suicides, um, a generalised mental health um, issues. Um, with Roxana, she was home alone. Um, she was obviously quite depressed. Um, so it was important that we supported her and we took her to hospital. What was your mental health that you suffered with? Emotionally unstable, borderline personality disorder. Are you diagnosed with anything else, mate? Depression and anxiety. Okay. I don't leave the house. Generally, general anxiety disorder, or no, it's a strong disorder. Oh, okay. And you, you use alcohol, and you've been known to overdose and the self harm. Mm. Did you take any drugs at all? No. Any learning disabilities? No. Any...? I've got seven GCSEs. Have you? Well done, mate. How many did you get? Um, I think I only got three, three or four. And you got an ambulance, right? I know, yeah, but I had to work hard afterwards. After a short journey, the ambulance arrives at the hospital. Are you finished? Yeah, I'm mate, waiting on you. I'm waiting for you. Oh, yeah, I was waiting for you to jump off first. <laughs> Roxana can now be treated by doctors and get the specialist help that she needs. It can be quite nerve-wracking, can't it, really, going to somewhere where, you know, there's self-harm or... Yeah, anything really, mental health, we're always stepping into the unknown, aren't yeah, we? Definitely. So definitely, you always got your guard up slightly, I think, just in case, but... Once you walk in, as soon as you gauge how the patient's feeling and how they're reacting to you, I think you tend to relax more. She's tried to utilise the services that have been put in place for her by ringing the crisis team. Hubert was admitted to hospital, where he was diagnosed with having had a number of mini-strokes. He's being cared for by his wife and daughter. 
Lara admitted herself to hospital, where she had a brain scan and blood test. It turned out a severe nasal congestion was causing her vertigo, and she was prescribed anti-sickness drugs. After a couple of days, she made a full recovery. After tests, it was confirmed that sadly Veronica had had a miscarriage. She had emergency surgery and a blood transfusion at the hospital before being discharged to recover at home with her family. Chris spent four hours in hospital having his head wound stitched up. His arm was badly bruised, but after a couple of weeks, he had fully recovered from his tumble down the stairs. Roxana had her wounds cleaned and rebandaged at hospital. After she was discharged, she sought additional support and counselling. She continues treatment for her anxiety and depression and reports feeling more positive. This is the best day I've had all year. Yeah, I think that's a reasonable statement. <laughs> 